So, so far in this section, we learned a lot about environment variables and configuration settings for our NestJS application. Now, whenever there is a large application, there we have a lot of environment variables. And it often becomes a challenge to debug your application if any one of the environment variable is not present or if it is not in the right format. And that's why it is important to have validations for your environment variables as well. Once you have validation in place for environment variables, and if a specific environment variable is missing, the developer will come to know about it. For example, currently in our application, we are using this DB password in order to read the password of the database. Now, if I remove this, and if I save the changes now, and if we go to the terminal, let me stop the process here, and let me restart the process. So since we have removed the environment variable, which is storing the password, now our application should not be able to connect to the database because it is missing the password. And you see here, we are seeing this message unable to connect to the database, but it is not telling us anything about why it is not able to connect to the database. It is not telling us that the environment variable, which is storing the password for the database that is missing. And that's why we need a validation for our environment variables as well. So here, let me get back DB password environment variable. Let me save the changes and let me stop the process again and let's restart it. Okay, so now the application will compile successfully and it will also be able to connect to the database. But now let's see how we can validate the environment variables how we can validate whether an environment variable is present or not and if it is in the correct format or not. And for that, we are going to install a package in our NestJS application. And for that, I'm going to open VS Code built-in terminal. Let me clear the terminal here. And here, we are going to install a package called Joey. So for that, let's say npm install and the package name is Joey. J O I and here I'm going to install a specific version of this package which is 17.12.2 okay let me press enter and let's wait for this installation to complete all right so the package has been installed let me close the terminal now let's go to the source folder so let me close these files for now and in the source folder, we have a config folder. Inside that config folder, we are going to create a new file. And this file will be responsible for doing the validation on all the environment variables. So inside this config folder, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it as env.validation.ts. Okay, you can name this file anything, but the extension should be .ts. And also the convention is, since it is going to be an environment variable validation file, you use the file name .validation. And then since it is a TypeScript file, you need to use .ts. All right. Now inside this file, the first thing which we are going to do is, we are going to import everything from Joey package. So here I'll say import star, and I'm going to give a name here, and I'll call it as Joey with J in caps. And we want to import everything from Joey package. Okay. Now this file should also export a default object and that object will be created by the Joey package. So here, what we need to do is we need to export default and here we are going to export an object and that object we need to create using Joey package. So here we have created a variable called Joey. So here you see, we have created this variable Joey, which is containing everything from this Joey package. And on that, we have a method called object using which we are going to create an object. And inside this, we are going to pass an object literal syntax like this, basically the curly braces like this. And inside this, we are going to write the validations. So for example, first of all, I want to validate the node underscore env environment variable. Okay. And to validate this, let's say this node env should be a string value. So on the Joey object, we are going to call a method 
string and this will validate that the value which we have received for this node env whether it is a string value or not if it is not a string value in that case this validator will throw an error and then let's also specify what are the valid values we are going to accept for node env environment variable and for that we have another validator called valid all these validators are basically methods and we can chain them together so here let's say for this node env we are going to accept development as the value we are going to accept test as the value or you can also specify staging here and we are going to accept production as the value okay and if we do not have any value for this node env then in that case we are going to set a default value for that we have this default and let's say the default is going to be development all right let me move these two separate lines to make it more readable so this is the validation we are doing for node env in the same way let's also do a validation for let's say port number so the port number we are storing in db underscore port environment variable right if i go to dot env dot development we have this db port which is storing the port number so on this also i want to perform some validation so first of all the port number should be a number so here let's say joey dot number it should be joey so joey dot number it will validate that whether the value which we have received for this port number whether it is a numeric value or not and then on this i'm also going to call another validator called port now what this port validator will do this port validator it takes the default port range available so it will make sure that the port value which is assigned to this db port environment variable it falls within the port range okay and here also we can set a default value so if the value for the port is not provided in that case the default value should be 5432 then let's also add validation for other environment variables so for example let's add validation for password the environment variable name is db underscore password so first of all the password should be a string value so here i'll say joy dot string and then the password should be required because if the password is not provided in that case our nest.js application will not be able to connect to the database so this is required and for that we have a validator called required all these validators are provided by this joey package and we can chain multiple validators together okay this is all i need for db password and in the same way i am going to specify the same validation for other things so for example for the username also it should be required and it should be a string value because without the username we will not be able to connect to our postgresql database so that is also required then we also need db name in order to connect to the database we also need to specify the host so here the environment variable name is db host again these environment variable names which i'm specifying here it is from the dot env file these environment variables which we have created here i am specifying the same name here so it is going to validate these environment variables from the dot env file all right and then in the environment variable we also have this secret key so i also want to validate that so the environment variable name is secret underscore key so this should also be a string value and let's say it is required so as you can see this file contains the environment variables from the global configuration files as well as module specific configuration file and it is also performing validation from different namespaces as well so here we are validating all the environment variables required for our application in one single file so let me save the changes here and now we need to make nest.js config module aware about this validation file we have created this validation file here but nest.js does not know about this validation file 
it does not know that it has to use this validation file in order to validate the environment variables and also the configuration settings which we have added in the custom configuration files so for that let's go to app module.ts file and in there first of all we need to import this file basically the object which this file is returning so here i'm going to add an import statement and since it is a default import let's say i'm going to call it as env validator from and then let's specify the file name so from the config file i want to import env.validation okay so the object which this file is returning it will be assigned to this env validator and now let's scroll down so here inside this for root method we are passing an object and there we are specifying some configuration for the config module so for this config module we are also going to specify another configuration and that configuration is validation schema so we are telling configuration module here that it has to use this env validator object in order to validate the environment variables which it is going to read from the env file path okay with this let's save the changes and now if i go to our terminal so here you see it says node env must be one of the following types development test or production so here let me stop the terminal first and we are going to run this application in dev mode so in the dev mode we are setting the environment variable i mean the node env to development and here we have the error because as i have mentioned previously it is possible that when we are setting this node env in the package.json file it might be taking this space as the node env name so let me try one thing let me remove that space and here also let me remove this space let's save the changes let's go back to terminal and let's stop the process let's start it again so as you saw it is already showing the environment variable validations so now you can see now it is compiling successfully and again if i go back and if i let's say remove one of the environment variables for example if i remove this password let's say or maybe this time let's remove this username if i save the changes and now if we go to the terminal let's stop the process and let's rerun it this time we should get a validation error and it should say that an environment variable is missing so you see we have a validation error and it says that this db underscore username it is required and since we have removed it it is giving us this validation error at the compile time only so as a developer i can look into this error message and i can fix this by simply going to this dot env file and adding that environment variable which is required for our application if i save the changes now and now if we compile this application now we should not be getting that error so in this way all our environment variables are getting validated and this is a very useful technique when working on a real world nest.js project in this way if any environment variable is missing the application will not compile and developer will immediately get an error and he can fix it and this will avoid any unexpected problem or error during the runtime so now you can see now our application is compiling successfully so in this lecture we learned how we can validate our environment variables this is all from this lecture and from this section if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day